Uh, when Tyler argues about the power of reason, usually I'm taking your view, but when I was sitting in the front row and looking at the titles of your books, I was particularly thinking about the blank slate. It seems like it's an entire book about how really smart people are really wrong about something. And many of your other books, I think, also could be described in that way. The smartest people in the world who think about the subjects the most are just deeply misguided. So what do you think is going wrong there? And more generally, so what is it wrong about, what is wrong with academia that there are so few Steven Pinkers out there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I won't answer the, the last question, uh, <laughs> not in those terms. Uh, there, I, I, I think that the, um, there is an uh, intellectual equivalent of, of uh, tribalism. Uh, John Haidt writes about it. Uh, I, you've written about it. That uh, We tend to think of intellectual di disagreements like the, uh, the Red Sox versus the Yankees. Uh, there, there are, are, um, it's, it's deeply pleasurable to read arguments that support a view that you already hold. It's um, uh, really annoying to read something that calls one of your doubts into question, what your beliefs into question. The, uh, ideally, what we want is an arena in which the rules of the game uh, make it so that no matter how emotionally tied you are to your belief, if it's wrong, it'll be shown to be wrong, and uh, it'll just be too embarrassing to hold on to it, uh, or at least for other people to hold on to it uh, indefinitely. That's what I consider to be the ideal of what, what science is, is all about and intellectual discourse in general. When it works, how to make it work better are really good questions. Certainly there are disturbing signs that, of, uh, um, that the, the, the process in some ways is getting worse. I see Greg Lukianoff is here, and the, the director of uh, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, which is, uh, does a brilliant job in combating some of the restrictions on free speech that we're seeing in university campuses, which would be a paradigm case of going in the wrong direction in terms of setting up rules that allow the truth to come out in the long term. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for uh, that naming and shaming and, uh, and arguments will uh, make free speech, give free speech a, a greater foothold in academia. The fact that academia is not the only arena in which debates are held, that we also have think tanks and we also have a, a press, we also have the internet. Um, uh, how we could sort of set up the rules so that despite all of the quirks of human nature, such as intellectual tribalism, are overcome in our collective uh, arena of discourse is, is, I think, an absolutely vital question, and I, I just don't know the answer, because we're seeing at the same time as there was the hope uh, 20 years ago that the internet would break down um, the institutional barriers to the best ideas emerging. Um, it hasn't worked out that way so far, because we have the festering of conspiracy theories and all kinds of kooky beliefs that somehow the internet has not driven out, but if anything have cre has created space for. How we, as a broader culture, can tilt the rules or the norms or the expectations so that if you believe something that's false, eventually you'll be embarrassed about it, uh, I, I wish I knew. But that's, not, that's obviously what we ought to be um, striving for.